Hi there. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so hopefully I won't make too many mistakes. Please bear with me. Um, today I'm going to talk through my process for conducting a weekly review. A weekly review is something that I do every Friday. I set aside maybe two or three hours in the afternoon, and I just go through everything that I've done that week. I try to close open loops. I try to look ahead a little bit to the next week, just make sure that I've got everything set up that I need for Monday morning so that I can really just kind of shut down on a Friday afternoon, uh, close my laptop, walk away from work and go into my weekend feeling like I don't have anything hanging over my head. I feel like if I've got open loops going into the weekend, I struggle to really disconnect and it really has a big impact on how I can relax on the weekend. So by doing the weekly review, I just make sure that everything that is meant to be done during that week has been done and everything that I need for Monday morning is set up and ready to go so that I can walk in on Monday morning, open up, I know exactly what I'm doing and I don't start the week with uh, you know that kind of indecisiveness or, or even worse, I don't start the week by opening my email and just going through everything that happens to be in my inbox. So it's a more intentional way of finishing the week and of preparing for the start of the next week. Most of the focus is on looking back um, at, at the past week rather than looking forward to the next week, although there is a little bit of planning that's involved. So I use something called Obsidian. Obsidian is a note-taking app uh, where you use Markdown to write your notes. You can really do this with uh, plain text. You can do it in a Word document. Evernote, simple notes, pen and paper, it really doesn't matter. I think what's important is the principle of having a weekly review process that you can go through at the end of your working week just so that you can shut down, switch off and uh, relax for a couple of days. This is Obsidian. This is what I use for all of my note taking, task management. Um, and uh, you can use anything. Uh, I, I happen to like the interface for Obsidian. It saves everything in plain text. so. Um, you can, you know, if, if Obsidian goes away tomorrow, uh, I can still find all of these things here. Um, this is this the uh, this is my weekly review template. It's all got all the same content that you can see in Obsidian. Um, so if Obsidian goes away, I can always just come back to to this text document, and and it's all good. So the way that it works is at the end of the week on a Friday afternoon, I know that I'm going to do my weekly review and just this is the way that it works in Obsidian. Um, I know that I don't have a weekly review for the 50th week, so I'm going to click that and what it does is it says you want to create a new weekly note. I say create and what it does is it, um, it creates a new note for that year, for that week and, and what I do is I then come here to my templates and I choose the weekly review template and it fills in this this information here. So every Friday, I open up one of these documents and I start working through these reflections. So it starts by looking at high value tasks. So for me, a high value task might be uh, writing that I do. Um, so that would be looking at articles that I contribute to any articles that I contribute to any uh, grant applications. I don't write a lot of grant applications, but that might be an example of a high value task. So what are the things where you're going to get um, a high rate of return on the time that you spend on that task? Um, and that would be different to important things. The, the one of the heuristics that I use to distinguish between high value tasks and important tasks are uh, with a high value task, the value accrues to me. With an important task, the value typically accrues to someone else. So these would be things that um, other people are waiting for me um, to do at work. So this might be feedback on um, uh, on a, a policy document that someone has shared. Um, uh, yeah, so important tasks are things that are important to do, but they're not necessarily high value for me. High value tasks are the things that I want to spend on, uh, spend time on because they're going to move my career forward in some meaningful way. Um, Obviously not saying that one is better than the other or more important than the other, but I try to make sure that I do spend a little bit of time every day on something that is high value for my career. And this would really be writing. And I'll show you um, maybe in another video what a daily review looks like, um, which includes uh, time set aside for writing. Because if you don't set aside time for writing, 
you're never actually going to have time to write. You tend to always value the important things that other people are asking you to do rather than starting with the important tasks that are important for, for you to do. I'm also trying to get into the habit of reviewing my habits. Um, so at the moment, I'm really trying to do uh, more exercise. So on a Friday, I might think back on the week and say, you know, did I do my three um, sessions of exercise this week? If not, do I want to book a si- book time for next week so that it's already in my calendar? Um, this is something that I picked up from Cal Newport. Um, he talks about community, constitution, craft, and contemplation. And I think these are really important um, to try and build into your week. Um, so I'll try to make sure that um, on the Friday, I'm looking ahead to next week and am I putting aside time to reflect? Usually I'll put this in my in my schedule as reading. Um, so these are just some things that you might want to include, but but you know whether you do or not is, is up to you, I guess. Um, I try to break down my review into capturing, processing, planning, and clearing. Uh, capturing is about capturing handwritten notes. So I do keep a diary, um, a, f- a physical diary. Um, so when I go to meetings, I typically will try to make notes in um, with pen and paper. And the reason I do that is because I find that typing up those notes afterwards, it does take time, but it gives me an opportunity to review everything that I captured during the meeting. Um, that just helps me to remember things. Um, and I don't know, it's, I've tried both and I've just found that capturing with pen and paper and then rewriting uh, afterwards, it's a little bit more time consuming, but I get a lot more value out of that process than if I just type up the notes straight away. Then I move on to capturing a weekly summary. And what I do then is I go to my monthly uh, notes template and I split that up into the different weeks of the month. And for this week, I will make a note in that monthly review Um, everything that I did that was noteworthy um, from the week. And it's usually between 10 and 20 line items. It takes about two or three minutes to do. And what that does is it means that I get a summary of all of the activity that I've completed in every week, in every month of the year, so that when I do my annual review, I can go back through that and I can see where are all the kind of noteworthy events that took place at what week, which are the months that were the most busy. Um, So I just find it very useful to reflect on what I've actually done this week. Another reason why I find that to be really helpful is that um, I can often get to the end of the week and think, what have I been doing? I've been working really hard, but I feel like I've done nothing. And when I actually go through that, I can say, oh, right, that's because I had you know four meetings every day. Um, so you're not really gonna make much progress on anything else if you have got you know lots of meetings. So it just helps me to put things into perspective. Didn't I make progress on some things? Well, maybe that's because I was overloaded in other areas. And then that might make me think whether or not I should try to reschedule some of the meetings that I have coming up next week, for example. Um, it's just a, this is just a pause, um, an opportunity to think back and then use what you've done this past week to maybe look ahead. Uh, if I didn't do any exercise this week, maybe I need to make sure that I set aside time for that next week. I hate going into the weekend with you know, five tabs open. Um, some people might say oh, with 50 tabs open, um, I tend not to have more than five tabs that are, that are open at any one time. And what I'll do with those is I'll either bookmark the tabs. Um, there's an extension in Firefox that I use called snoozing tabs. I might snooze the tab for next week, but I try to make sure that all of my tabs are closed, close the browser, shut down. I know that I don't have anything open. That would be an example of what I said earlier, an open loop. I don't like to have open loops going into the weekend. If there's something that I need to read and I've got the tab open because I'm supposed to read it, I'll put that into Reader or Pocket or some other Read It Later app. Um, If it's an action that I need to take, then I'll try to make sure that that action gets captured in a daily note for next week. Um, So there's always an action that's linked to an open tab. And so I try to convert that into the the actual item rather than just leaving the tab open as a way of reminding me later that I need to deal with that. So once I've captured all of those pinned tabs, I close all my tabs, close the browser, then I'm done. I try to process all email and by all email, I'm an inbox zero person. So every Friday I try to make sure that my inbox is empty. And sometimes that means that I just snooze emails. You know, there may be emails that I need to deal with, but I can deal with them next week. So I'll snooze them until next week. I literally try to go into the weekend with an empty inbox. 
Um, and this really forces me to sometimes spend two hours just grinding through emails. That's all that I do. And I like the forcing function that this places on my time. So when I, before I can tick off that process all email, I need to actually go through and deal with all of those emails. Because some of them, they're not urgent. I could leave it until next week. But this forces me to to either deal with it right now or snooze it until next week. And I don't snooze everything. Um, if I can get through it, I will get through it. I process every daily note. Um, so every daily note, uh, every day I take a note and I go through those notes, all the meetings, all the tasks, and I try to make sure that every task that's linked to a meeting from the past week has either been completed or carried forward to next week. So I don't want to have any open tick boxes um, for, for the past week. If it's an open tick box, I should have completed it this week. If I can't complete it this week, I'll move it to next week. I process all my temporary notes as well. Temporary notes are notes that I've made in either Simple Note or Otter. Otter is a, um, a transcription-based service where I can take voice notes and it converts that into text. I'll take all of those notes and I will move them into uh, this system in Obsidian um, or I'll delete them. Um, usually they're about a, a reminder to do something or a task to complete, an action to complete, make a phone call, send an email. So I'll pull that information into um, my Obsidian Vault and then delete that temporary note. Processing desktop computer items. Um, you can have a look here. Here's my desktop folder. I've got one folder in it. BCI is Brain Computer Interface. I've got four articles in there that relate to a PhD student that I might be taking on. I know that I need to work through those articles. On a Friday, what I might do is open up that folder have a quick look at the abstracts of the four articles. I might delete one or two. I'll pull the others into Zotero and make a note in Zotero that these are articles I need to read because they link to a PhD student that I might be supervising. And then I can delete it off my desktop and then my desktop is clean. So again, every Friday I try to make sure that I go into the weekend having no items on my desktop. What people tend to do is they tend to leave items on the desktop as a reminder to get to them later. For me, that's just um, psychological baggage. It's overload. It's something that every time I look at my desktop, it reminds me that there's work that needs to be done that I haven't done. When I pull that into Zotero, I can manage it more effectively. So there's a note. I can add dates to the notes. When did you add this? Uh, when do you need to do it by? And I just make sure that I work through my Zotero folder um, fairly regularly. But because Zotero isn't open, I don't have this constant reminder of this task that I need to be doing. Um, so that's all the process. Then for planning, um, I review the calendar for next week. So I'll go and I'll look, especially Monday, Tuesday. I'll try to make sure that my daily notes for Monday and Tuesday are set up. All my meetings are scheduled. If there's any notes that I need for those meetings, they're attached to the meetings. Um, I try to start Monday morning with a two-hour writing session. So I know that I'm just going to go into the week and I'm going to get a good start on the week. That makes me feel like I've got to jump on, on, on the week by, by doing a little bit of writing. So I'll review the calendar. What is important that's coming up on Monday or Tuesday? Is there anything I need to prepare? Should I have given feedback to any colleagues uh, ahead of those meetings? And I'll try to make sure that I do all of that now. If I'm really organized, I should have actually done those things. I shouldn't be on a Friday afternoon. I should not be um, scrambling to try and make sure that work is done for Monday. Uh, I review my monthly goals. So um, uh, I'll go through all of my tasks that I've set out for the month. And I will be selective and choose one item from each area. So that might be writing, admin, postgraduate work. Um, I'll try to pick one item from each of those things and I'll add it to next week's plan. And what this does is it allows me to get to the end of the month and be able to see that there are certain important things that I've managed to make progress on at the end of the month. So you don't get to the end of the month and realize that you've just been scrambling the whole month. You've just been cycling through emails. Um, and I find that that, that is also really useful. Um, I, Headspace is a, a project that I'm, I'm running, um, actually a, a service I'm, I'm trying to um, build. And I just try to make sure that uh, there's a little bit of activity going on on the Twitter account. And so I try to schedule those tweets um, for the next week. This now file is something that I've spoken about before. 
it's really just a list of current projects, a list of postgraduate students, ongoing projects, articles I'm busy with, some research tasks that I need to do. Um, the reason I have this file is really just to remind myself of what I have going on at any one time. So when someone comes and says, we've got this project, do you want to be involved? I'll just have a little look at my now file and say, is this something I actually have the headspace to take on right now? Found time planning is something I'll actually do a little bit, um, a little video on that another time. And then clearing, um, I've actually found this, uh, this first item in clearing to be really helpful. Um, when I walk in on Monday morning, I like to see an empty desk. And so I like to pack everything away on my desk. I don't like to have physical clutter on the desk. I try to just tidy it up. And I found that when I walk in on a Monday morning and my desk is nice and neat, um, it just makes me feel better um, about the start of the week. You know, your, your mileage may vary. Maybe that's not a big deal to you. Maybe you like the clutter. But that's just something that I like to do. And this is kind of, you know, almost on the way out the door. And then the very last thing that I do every week without fail is I back up my laptop. Um, I think backups are one of those things that really doesn't matter until it does. And if you've ever been hit by a catastrophic failure and you've lost everything, you know how soul destroying it is to have to rebuild everything from scratch. And so I just make sure that every week I do a backup. Um, I have two backups that I normally run. I even have a daily backup. Um, so if it's been an especially heavy day and I've taken lots of notes and, and really just, um, you know, worked through a lot of different files, I'll do a backup at the end of the day as well. Um, but most of the time I save that for the end of the week. So anyway, that's my weekly review. Um, other people have different processes. I've seen people uh, capturing their step count for the day, their weather, things that they eat. Um, I think what's really useful for me is to try and uh, set aside some time that you can use to capture and reflect and to think about and to plan all the things that are important to you. So if step counts are important to you, then that's something that you probably should think about capturing in your, in your weekly review. Thanks if you've made it this far. Um, I really appreciate it. If you find these kinds of videos useful, you might be interested in a service that I provide. I mentioned it earlier, it's called Headspace. I'm trying to build a program for academics who are interested in doing more of the high value tasks like writing, um, making progress on a PhD, grant applications, maybe getting better at writing, setting aside time for writing, um, but just feel that the pressures of your daily work, the operational demands that are placed on you are just too much and you struggle to set aside time for the things that you really want to do. Uh, Headspace is a program that I think will uh, free up a little bit of time in, in your daily work. Um, so check it out. It's academic-headspace.com. Um, I'd really appreciate it. You can sign up for the newsletter. That's free. Um, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.